Hey -o, everybody, Haku here with my live reaction to read through for Marriage Talks in chapter 98. Last week was off, there wasn't a new chapter, so we have 98 this time. I'm super excited where we left off last time. It makes me feel like judging from the way that past arcs have gone, we're probably either going to get the first part of the date with Ushio this week, and then we finish it like the first part of next chapter we'll finish that off and then the second part of next chapter will sort of trans start transitioning us into the next arc or we have the whole date this chapter and like the very end like the last page or two will be some kind of like teaser for what's going to happen with the next arc either way though we are almost at a milestone we're almost at chapter 100 for marriage toxin so i feel like i feel like it may be more will be this is just the first part of the date, the date extends into next chapter, and the next chapter, since it's chapter 99, will start transitioning us so that we can have something big happen for chapter 100, which will lead us into whatever the next arc is. Maybe something big and important with previous characters coming back. That, I think, would be pretty cool, pretty neat. Really, with this about to hit out, hit 100, I was... um thinking, talking about this on Discord with people yesterday, I really feel like, so we're about to hit 100 here, plus My Hero Academia just ended, Mainline Jump, Jujutsu Kaisen is ending, it really feels like, and I've talked for a while about how good I think the Jump Plus lineup has been, meanwhile the Mainline Jump lineup is constantly just cutting things at the classic 20 chapter axe point, and even the long-running things are only making it like one to two hundred chapters at this point. Like, it's rare that something's going beyond that. It really feels like, compared to Mainline Jump, Jump Plus right now has Marriage Toxin and Chainsaw Man, Oshinoko, uh, I Enjoy Torprin and Hokkaido Gals, there's uh, Ron Kimono Hashi is here, I already said Oshinoko, Spy Family, Kaiju number eight, like there is a really, really strong lineup of heavy hitters that's that are like doing well right now and going pretty long in Jump Plus, and so much is like ending or just ended in or about to end as well in Mainline Jump that it just feels like, you know, if a couple of years from now some of these Jump Plus series, if they're still around, if they're still going up into higher numbers, we could be at a point where in a couple of years, maybe not even that long, Jump Plus is just having a way more dominant lineup than Mainline Jump outside of One Piece. So, yeah, I was I was just thinking about that. So we're almost at a big mile point for Marriage Toxin. Either way, though, let's go ahead and uh, start reading this week's chapter. As usual, of course, I can't show it on screen because it's Jump, because it's Shueisha. So you just got the volume cover up here. Hopefully we get a new volume cover soon, but I think it's definitely still going to be quite a few more weeks because we, we haven't really built up enough new chapters through the new arc. But I really want a good-looking Ushio cover, you know? Uh, so this is the date planned by Ushio is, we see, Cream Puff, Bomber, and they explode in, uh, I guess this is a comedy show, maybe that's a Manzai duo or something. And she's taking notes. It's so cute. If I wasn't so devoted to Kinosaki, I don't even, like, I'm, I'm sorry to Kinosaki as much as I am devoted to Kinosaki, Ushio might be better. Honestly, Ushio might be, like, actual best girl. Ushio is so cute, so pretty, has, like, the best story so far for me. Like, I freaking love Ushio. So, I bought a car recently, and that's Cream Puff Bomber. They recently won the XYZ Comedy Grand Prix. And then, and they said they're, er, and they're said to be the duo closest to becoming the next kings of comedy. Apparently, the staff eats up all the remnants of the exploded Cream Puffs. Comedy on Heaven and Earth Festival, and we flash back to them going down the hill. Yes, Comedy Heaven for short. The festival features 500 comedian groups. Oh my god, that seems like it would be very, very long. <laughs> From various agencies all over. From younger duos with less than a year of experience to veteran act or veterans active in the business for over 30 years. It's an intense event where each group gets a theater all to themselves to perform their acts on stage in front of a live audience. I didn't know such a large comedy festival existed. 500 groups, says Kinosaki. I love that this is what Ushio likes to do, like, for fun, as a hobby. 
Like, it, it's kind of unexpected, and I love that. It's going to be held this weekend, so I thought it was a... Or I thought it was perfect for a date. And I just happened to have an extra ticket, too. That sounds awesome. Have fun, Geto-kun. And then, it, is this event not to your liking, Hikaru-sama? No, it's not that. I just didn't expect you to like comedy so much. Well, what's wrong with liking comedy? And she's blushing. Studies have shown that laughter is good for your health, and maintaining a relaxed mind is key, or is key to doing good business. Well, I don't know much about comedy myself, but I'm looking forward to it. And now we have studying Ushio. She's so cute. I love her. Since there's 500 groups to choose from, I'll narrow down our options to those rated above 3.5 stars on Comedy B. I'll check their awards history, comedic style, and potential to be the next big hit. Then, I'll analyze all the data and carefully select the 10 best groups to recommend for the day. And, with my excellent scheduling and management skills, I now have the best comedy festival itinerary in all history. She's so good! This should give Hikaru-sama the time of his life and earn his maximum satisfaction rating. And now we have Tatan 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 Tate Tata or Tatan? Um, or is it supposed to be Tatin? And then this du duo's doing too many ad, -lib ad libs, she thinks. They've already exceeded their time by over three minutes. Madeline, Madeline, are you okay? We're going to that next theater. Why so much audience interaction? They're supposed to be doing skits. Next. They just keep repeating the same inside jokes. Next. This <laughs> is so cute. I can't tell if it's like... It, it's probably a little bit of both. But her wanting to give Ghetto, like, the funnest time possible. And being like, oh no, he's not going to have fun. He's not going to find it funny. And like, over over worrying being over anxious about that i think that's probably a part of it but i wonder if it's not just that but also her like from what we see of her making the schedule her regimented personality not liking that they're going off script so to speak or going away from what they should be doing or what they're known for now everything's going wrong at this rate, Hikaru-sama's gonna end up disappointed. Hey, how about we take a little break? We don't have time for breaks. We're watching Parallel Ninja next. They're highly rated on Comedy B at 4.1 stars. And it says house full, no more tickets available. <laughs> She's dejected. And I love how you have the stealth, um, stealth Kinosaki following them around in all these panels. That's cute. I'm wondering... How many panels you can see her in, or him, her? I again, I, I'm never quite sure what to go with with Kinosaki. I guess, respectfully, it probably should be him. But I love the ones where you can see Kinosaki just lurking. Why Paranin was supposed to be the main highlight of our comedy or our, of our comedy heaven schedule. How about this one? There's lots of seats open. Miso Odin. They're an old duo who's been around for twenty years now. They've basically dropped out of the awards race, and they just keep repeating their late-night convenience store clerk sketch series wherever they go. Look, their rating on Comedy B is only 1.2 stars, but it should still be more productive than crying over spilled milk, right? Then, oh, <laughs> she's so cute. <laughs> they go in. You know that machine they used to me or they used to measure eye pressure, right? Measure eye pressure? Oh, you mean the one that blows in your eye? I'm not very good with that, so can you help me practice? Practice? Sure, I guess. Huh? Is this a new joke, she thinks. Right then, I'll be the eye pressure measuring machine and you be the doctor, okay? The doctor, okay. Then, he's just blowing, not even towards him though. Uh, do you even need me here? Well, who would move me if you're not around? Oh, because they're not the machine and the patient, <laughs> the machine and the doctor. Uh, do you really need to get that er into the role that much? And we see her laughing. So precious, so cute. She's amazing. I really didn't expect them to suddenly come up with a new joke at this late stage in their career. I should update their comedy V. This year's King of Comedy Battle is going to be very exciting. I love how she's such a nerd about it too with all of her stats and measuring and stuff. It's so cute. You know. I also learned this just recently, but 
when things don't go according to plan, you'll often find yourself making discoveries you never imagined. Life's funny that way, I guess. And he notices that she stopped. Hikaru-sama? What score would you give today's date? 10 out of 10, 11 out of 10, 100 out of 10. What? I know it's not normal to straight out ask someone to rate a date, but that's just how I am. My adoptive mother raised me with strict standards. Besides helping me better my techniques, she also taught me financial management and negotiation skills. Now that I'm older, I realize she did that to make sure that I could have a long and resilient career as a specialist. Being logical and efficient is something that's been drilled into me. That's why I would like to profusely apologize for wasting your time today. I know that today's date was worth zero points. What? It's not. Actually, I... I was awful. I dragged you all over the place and then got in a bad mood all on my own when things didn't go my way. In the end, and again, the fact that you can even, like, you have the self-reflection or the sort of, um, you have the presence to know, oh, I got mad for a dumb reason, is, like, a good thing in itself, you know? Then in the end, we were only lucky enough to catch a good show because you suggested going into that empty theater. I know your time's very valuable, foo, and he mimics the joke, foo, foo. Are you supposed to be an eye-measuring machine or something? Don't forget, as long as both people have fun, the date's a success, we have Kinosaki. Ushio, when I saw you laughing your heart out over that joke, I found myself having fun too. That's why. The state gets a perfect score from me. She blushes. This is all your fault, Ikaru-sama. It's your fault that I've started to consider that straying from the logical and most efficient path might not be so bad. That's why you should take responsibility and keep me company in pursuing my hobbies from here on as well. Sure thing. She really, as much as I love all the other previous characters, especially Urashiyama, Urashiyama is so so good. Ushio just, it makes me feel like, okay, just marry her, get the series over with, I guess. Like, what more do we need to see? I feel like Ushio wins. I feel like if you have to, you know, the goal for him is to get married, but also the thing he has to do is have kids. So if you if you have to marry somebody and procreate, like, I'm just like, less than a year, Ushio is pregnant, sorry. But like, she's so good. She's amazing. I love her. And now we see seven people in his contacts, tearing down walls and living without limits. That was so good. That was so cute. I love Ushio so, so, so much. And again, it's just like, where do we go? She's so amazing. Like, how how do we go anywhere else from here? I feel like, uh, as much as I want to keep seeing new girls be introduced, because I love that with, like, etchy series like Manmusu, for example. To me, those kinds of series are at their best, where you introduce a new girl and developer, then introduce a new girl and developer, and keep doing that, and sometimes go back to previous characters, but really just keep introducing new ones and developing them. So it's like, do we do that for the next arc, or do we now start to kind of go back to some of the others? It's like, d like her name was Himakawa, right? Do we need to go back to Himakawa? and start like really giving her a second arc like a second chance because her arc was like i think less than 10 chapters so so like do we need more time with her as a character because right now at less than 10 chapters she really isn't standing with some of these others for me or do we go back to ushio ushio has appeared a little bit here and there since her arc uh, do we go back to Arashiyama, who had, like, one of the longest and best arcs, but hasn't really been back at all since then? Do we go back to her? I feel like, at what point do we need to start going back and, like, developing these, like, previous characters more? Older characters, kind of, sounds like a weird way to word it, these previous characters more. Because compared to that, you have Ushio, who starts out in the Himakawa arc, gets attention as part of the antagonist group, then is part of the main character raid on the island group as part of the Arashiyama arc, and now, for the, like, 
third appearance has her own arc to herself. So you get to be an antagonist in an arc. You get to be a supporting character in an arc. And not just like supporting as in she shows up once or twice. She is like there for it. And then you get to be the main female lead for an arc. So it just feels like Ushio has gotten way more time and development than some of the others in terms of actually being important especially too when you consider that i love that marriage toxin had ushio be the one to have the final battle and everything because for some of the others i think it's good when it's different like not all of the people he's dating are fighters for sure um I think it's nice to have them play different roles in their different arcs, the female lead. But when you let Ushio take such a like proactive, like front and center, actual fighter, actual, and actually having the main fight on top of that, when you let her take this kind of front facing role, it just feels more impactful than some of the others who, even though I like that they were just a supporting character, they didn't get to like physically actively do as much for their arc, even when they were there for their arc. So it's like compared to Arashiyama, who was really great support and really great, you know, emotional stuff. She was kind of off screen a lot when the actual like fighting and action was going on. Whereas Ushio wasn't really off screen at all. She was there for pretty much every step of this arc from being the, you know, obviously the date here at the end, but from being there for the fighting and action stuff and being front and center for that, not just being there for it, but being front and center, being there for the investigation stuff, not off screen for any of that, being there when we first get there and we're learning backstory stuff. Like Ushio really, to me, has been the strongest so far by a long shot. And second up is probably Arashiyama, who I think also had a really strong showing in her arc and had the benefit of it being a long arc and a really good arc. And then I guess I guess, I guess after that would be like the... Oh god, I have to try to remember everyone's names. Was it Miki or Hiki? I think it was Miki, right? Um, had the... Miki, Akakura, and Ureshino arcs, where their arcs were like, yeah, maybe a dozen-ish chapters long or so, something like that. And they got to play, like, decent roles in their arc. I don't think that they played as strong a role in each of their arcs as Ushio, but they played just as as strong, if not arguably stronger, a role than... Um, Arashiyama, it's just that Arashiyama got the benefit of a longer arc and a really good arc. And then I think the weakest so far was with was with Himakawa, just because it was so short right at the beginning. The series was still just kind of finding its footing. So I think that she had the weakest showing. And then, of course, there's kind of the Kinasaki arc, really, with the gun user association and everything. And Kinasaki has just been great kind of my favorite character between her and ghetto her and ghetto have just or him and ghetto have kind of just battled for the top spot as my favorite character i think ghetto is maybe my favorite right now but the two of them i kind of go back and forth on kinosaki's just been a great character every arc but then also gets focus in an arc even if i don't think like even the gun user association arc it's not like kinosaki was like that amazing compared to normal uh, but, you know, even getting focus for an arc is something. And also the fact that no matter where we go, it feels like Kunosaki's still going to be around as kind of the long-term lead alongside Ghetto. So there's that. So I, it, I do kind of wonder, maybe next chapter, next arc, maybe we go back to Himakawa. Or I think there's like, I forget her name, the, um... I forget her name already, but the older sister from the, like, the leader for the Gun User Association arc. She was kind of an antagonist, but I feel like she could easily, easily come back again as, like, one of the leads for one of these next arcs. I think that we're the least, I, d I don't think we're that likely to go into another focus on Arash or on Arashiyama, just because her, her arc was pretty conclusive and pretty long and it wasn't that long ago i don't think we're 
going to get that much more into Ureshino right this second because Ureshino again had a really fully fledged arc and then also kind of um and then also kind of played a role during the Miki arc or Hiki again or I, I don't I don't 100% remember her name <laughs> it might have been Hiki yeah it might have been Mikoto Hiki was that it um I was thinking of Mikoto was where I was getting the me from then I don't think that she's coming back because her arc just happened. I think either next we're getting a new character to focus on them for the next arc. And again, there's probably going to be more going on than just who it is that's the main female lead. But that's ca that's kind of how I've been separating all the arcs is who the female lead of the arc is, with the exception of the bug user wedding arc. We could have something again that's kind of like the bug user wedding arc but I doubt it. I think we're either going to get into some more serious lore world building stuff for going into chapter 100's arc or, and I mean, I guess, and you could also use this as a way to introduce a new character. I think we either get a new character, we go back into Himakawa because it's been forever and she hasn't done as much. Um, or I think that the gun user, like main like lady could become come back to be a female lead sort of how ushio has come back to be a main lead even though that was kind of recent i don't think we need to wait that long i think she could already just come back into the story there's a non z i think tonako is too important i don't think we get a tonako arc and if we do, it's not anytime soon. I think we would have to wait a bit. Like, if Tonoko is even a potential for the, you know, ghetto marriage candidate, I don't think we get into that until at least another arc or two. We would need to build things to a higher level before then. Because last time we saw her, she seemed, like, insanely strong compared to ghetto and peachy and of course ghetto has been getting stronger but i think that he's maybe not quite at that level yet and i don't think we really go into an arc with her with her as like a main important character like that until ghetto is more on her level so yeah that's that's what i'm thinking long discussion but that's just because you know we don't really get to talk about marriage talks in that much so either way I'll end things here. Thank you so much for watching. Like if you did like the video, comment down there. Tell me what you thought of Marriage Talks in this week, what you thought of my thoughts and reaction to it. Subscribe for more Marriage Talks and much more on the channel. Follow on Twitter if you want. If you want a link to the Discord server, it's free and open for anyone. Just ask and I can give you a link. And if you would like to help support the channel by dropping a super thanks, that is appreciated. Or if you want to help support the channel, get One Piece videos a little bit early and get uh, your name at the end of every video. Hit join down below to become a channel member. Go to patreon.com slash haku of the tubes or a link will be in the description to become a patron. Thank you so much to people who are patrons and channel members already. Thank you to chosen regular Evan Holly, Magical Girls, FR Nono, Abyss Knight, JA, and VD Band, Cheriton Students, David Link, Staff and Folded Ghoul, Slayer Candidates, SG, and Stan Cedar, and Pure Element, Pateo de Thank you so, so much for watching. Thank you so much, and I'll see you all next time. <laughs>